recording here. Oh, very technical, this. Oh, I know, so many <laughs> things. So many things to do. Okay, we are on. Yes. Well, welcome, everyone. It's so great to see all that are joining us tonight. And right now, I can't see you, but um, I can see Leslie in the corner. So that's that's good to know. I'm not just talking to myself. Um, tonight, we are lucky to have Leslie with us from Globus, and we are talking about Italy and Greece, and specifically, Escapes by Globus, um, which are tours that Globus offers in off-season, which she says generally runs uh, November to March, you say, Leslie? Something and yes, like some that? into April, and some of them go into April. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Nice. And I was looking at the price point of these tours, and it's, they're amazing. They are amazing, really. Well, it's too good to be true. It, it is. <laughs> I had to like really look, how many days is that? <laughs> so that's great. But in the meantime, what you can see on your screen right now is um, a couple pictures just from my trip. We were just in Italy and Greece, actually, in November, so in off season. And some of, I took a group over there, and some of our group uh, wondered a little bit about how the, how the weather might be but we really lucked out. And I don't know if it was luck or if it was just, um, I think their temperatures, we were expecting about 18, you know, every day in um, Italy and Greece when we were there. We were there mid-November. So beginning, actually middle, we started November 7th. So to mid, and it was two weeks we were on tour. Um, uh, the crowds were not even there. It was wonderful. We could get in wherever we wanted to, take photos without other people in the way. And, we had um, only one storm, I guess, stormy, uh, that we had to uh, just be patient and let it pass. But uh, otherwise, the weather was great. And so as you can see from my photos, we didn't have to fight crowds. It was, it was perfect and blue skies. So that's a, a great thing about going in off season, which Leslie is gonna tell you more about. So I'm gonna hand it over to her. And you can share your screen now. I'll okay. stop sharing mine and you can get on there. So if you have any questions as we're going along, please feel free to use the chat box or unmute yourself. You have the ability to do that. Just unmute yourself and pipe in. I don't mind at all. Feel free to do that if something comes to mind. And otherwise we will also stop at the end and ask if there's any questions. So. Take it away, Leslie. Okay, I'm just playing with my controls here. Sorry. Um, okay. So yeah, thanks for thanks for inviting me on this. I'm losing track of the days of the week. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's I had a Tuesday look at my night calendar. travel. I know. Talk. I know it's Tuesday. <laughs> yes. I, I'm just. I have just lost track. I don't. Don't ever leave my house. Like I get excited on weekends anymore. Oh, so, no. um, but it's it's your time to dream of your next vacation. And really, we're going to be armchair travelers tonight. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the Globus family. I'm going to be highlighting Globus, especially escapes by Globus, like like we just talked about the off season travel. And I just took two of the popular itineraries to highlight, but there is a lot to choose from for off-season travel within Italy and Greece, and I'll talk about that uh, tonight as well. Um, I am based in Calgary, and I've been with uh, the Globus family of brands for 15 years. And I have been to Italy and Greece. I've been, I've been lucky to be Italy, gone to Italy twice, and I've been in, to Greece once. Um, and just like Leah mentioned, Italy was my very first vacation to Europe. Um, back when I started with the company 15 years ago, but just over 15 years ago, I was there in April uh, when Pope John Paul II passed away. So it was a really unique time to go to Italy because none of the VIP sightseeing existed because of the voting of the new Pope. <laughs> so you couldn't get uh, the Vatican, for example, there was no VIP line back then uh, because you couldn't go into the Vatican, right? And you couldn't go into the Sistine Chapel, right? So it was a really unique time for me to go, but I had fond memories. And then um, three, no, two years ago, I went back and we did a tour of Southern Italy. So, um, which was really unique because I, before I've only done Rome, Florence and Venice. So really, and Greece is one of my all time favorite trips. 
Now I was there in the peak season. So I have, I saw the crowds. So I can see how busy it can get. So compared to your pictures, it's like I would have had people in all my pictures because I was there in August, which is when all the Europeans travel as well. So not only is there international travelers there in August, it was European travelers. So it's so busy on the islands, especially on the islands in, in August, even though it is really, really hot. So um, the Globus family of brands is four brands. Tonight I'm going to be highlighting Globus, but we do have three other brands that Leah does sell as well. So uh, that we do offer Italy and Greece with Cosmos and monograms. Uh, actually, only Italy with monograms right now, but Cosmos has Italy and Greece. There are a few tours with Cosmos, for example, um, that offer the two countries together. So it's just, a, which is nice, all one vacation or not doing the back-to-back. -back. Monograms is our independent city travel and we do have some fantastic vacations in Italy. And we do have a river cruise line called Avalon Waterways and we don't have any Italian river cruising. So we do have all the European main rivers um, and Leah can give you some more information on those as well if you're interested. So the big question is, and I'm, I'm talking a lot about touring tonight and in the destination, but why take a tour in today's world? Why might you be, maybe you've never looked at taking a tour before, maybe you've done your own um, style travel, doing your own thing, your own hotels, getting from place to place. You might have had uh, help with, from your travel agent, but you really truly did everything on your own. So I think post COVID travel, it's going to be, it's going to be a little different. We've got this new normal we're talking about, right? So um, the Globus family brands, we are committed to the health and safety. And that comes first when it comes to you, our travelers, as well as our staff. That means you might have a temperature check at the hotel. Our staff are always having temperature checks and, and being health screened as well. Touring is hassle-free. I'm going to talk about the touring tonight, but it's all pre-planned. You don't have to worry about planning anything. It's all taken care of for you. It's easy as well. It's all the VIP inclusions and skipping the lines. So I mentioned I was in Italy at a very unique time where I couldn't skip the line. But nowadays, you go to the Vatican, we show up at 8 a.m. before it opens to the public, and we have the rooms to ourselves. So really we can keep us ourselves in our own little bubble when we're going through the rooms, which is nice. Um, Hand-selected hotels. Globus uses first class and above hotels. You're in the heart of the city. It could be an intercontinental property. It could be a Marriott property, a West End style property, but those are the type of hotels that Globus uses always in the heart of the city, like, and really in walking from, you know, a local restaurants to shopping, and everything. With these hand-selected hotels, we are working with these hotels with their health and safety protocols and their guidelines. Um, some of these hotel chain partners of ours have already come out with videos of what they're doing in the, new, in the near future of help, help keeping their hotels safe as well. So just to know that. Um, we are the local experts, so let our tour director, let our team take care of all the issues that we need to know about how many meters apart do we need to be, how, you know, how many people can be here. Let us take care of all that. You sit back and have a vacation, okay? Because I know we're all Googling stuff and everything, but let, you know what, let, let the experts take care of all that. Um, and peace of mind that you're traveling with other people that have gone through the same health screening and temperature checks. That's really important that you know this, little, this group that you're traveling with, it could be 30 guests traveling together, um, and you're all in your little bubble, right? Which is nice. So what's included, and I'll highlight all of this today, but the transportation um, is done by motor coach. Your accommodation, the guidance of a tour director, as well as the driver, they're important with the guidance because they are local drivers and they know how to get places and not get lost, as well as they know where to park those nice motor coaches and to get you everywhere, everywhere safely. Sightseeing is included and of course, leisure time. So depending on what tour that you might choose um, in the destination, especially on the islands, uh, if you've got some leisure time to explore on your own too and taste all the delights like, uh, you know, have the local drink, you know, the local glass of wine, or what did we have? We had a, we, we ate a lot of moussaka <laughs> when we were in Greece, and a lot of salads, and a lot of, well, Greek salads, the best Greek salads, and a lot of that Greek yogurt at, at uh, breakfast. So, you know, you'll have that leisure time to go out and explore as well, uh, and enjoy all the delights, and then the fresh catch, the fresh catch of the day, all of that. Um, and so, when you're looking at a tour, it's all included. You know, you have your, your transportation, the hotels, the VIP entrance, 
We give you the freedom, you're guided. You can just sit back, relax, and have a vacation. So for example, this is, um, my, it's all included example for Rome here. You know, this is Trevi Fountain. So I threw my coin in last year. I hope I could get to go back. <laughs> so I, and then I actually, for me, I was there in May and the fountain I went during the day, it was packed. You could barely get a picture of it. And we went back in the evening and there was nobody around. We were back because we went to a little local restaurant close by and after dinner we went over and about at 10 o'clock at night a lot of people have gone gone away so but when you go in the off season with this gate spike globus you're gonna be have an opportunity to go to some of these sites and seldom see people around which is really really nice local favorites are always included in our tours this is one of my italian local favorites the batchy chocolate so batchy chocolate tasting could be in one of the tours that we have the VIP access, for example, the Acropolis here uh, in Athens, the hotels that we stay at in Athens are right in the Placa area. So you can see it right from your hotel, all the local restaurants in there, but it's the VIP access. So we have this included on the tour. We skip the lines. Now, I don't know when you were there, but when I was there, it was very crowded. <laughs> and I, and uh, I'm not sure what it was like in the off season. Do you have any comments on that, Leah? <laughs> Oh, you're muted. You're muted. I'm muted. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, when we were there, it was a Sunday. So it was quiet to begin with, as it is. And uh, we had no problems getting pictures, gorgeous pictures of the Acropolis from afar on Mars Hill. Um, it was, yeah, it was really nice. It, it almost felt like we were there alone. You really. had it to yourself. Oh, yeah. I'm a little jealous. I'm a little I'll jealous because that's pictures. what I hear. <laughs> Because yeah, that's what I true. hear about when from from guests that go like in the off season, traveling November through March, is that they truly yeah. have these these historic sites to themselves. Yeah. Right. You know, it might be a few locals there, maybe a school group there, but really, you truly have it to your to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, hotels are centrally located hotels. This is an example of a hotel in Chianti that we use. So we do have some fun hotels besides the Intercontinentals and the Marriotts and all that, but some quaint um, hotels as well. And remember, they're on the heart of the city, so you're really close to everything from your hotel. Now, the transportation is done by motor coach. You know what is nice about touring is you sit back, relax, enjoy the view. So if you're the driver in the family and have always been driving everybody around when you're on vacation, this is when you can have a vacation. You can be taking photos out of these panoramic windows you can see on the coach. You know, you can enjoy the Wi-Fi on the motor coach. We have the little USB ports to charge all your devices on the coach. They're very... Um, comfortable. I find them too comfortable because sometimes I fall asleep right away. It starts to start rolling. Um, but you really can have a vacation letting someone else drive you around, not worrying about getting lost. No waste of time. We're taking care of all that for you. We are, you are taken care of by a local. We have local um, tour directors uh, throughout Italy and Greece. This is one of our tour directors. I believe her name is Linda and she's been the Globus family brands now, she'll kill me if I tell you actually how long, but close to 30 years. She's contracted yearly by us, so it's not, doesn't, by any means, she doesn't need to come back. <laughs> but she is a fantastic lady. She's done an excellent job escorting our groups. Um, and it, she is Italian, and this is her passion. You can see this is an area shot of her in Florence, as you can see here. So... Time to give your dreams a whirl. If you got a glass of wine in your hand or you're gonna maybe go get a glass of wine because you sit back, relax. I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, Italy and Greece now and highlight the tours. So um, here's a beautiful picture of, of, in Italy here, but you know what, I want you to come to Italy. Come to Italy, uh, you're gonna love Italy. Uh, you're gonna love the food, you're gonna love the drink, you're gonna love the people, you're gonna love the history, you're gonna, you're gonna love everything about Italy that you want to go back. You know, it's a destination that people do go back to because um, they fell, and they actually fell, fell in love with Italy. Like you're falling in love for the first time over and over and over again. I like to throw in some, some fun facts, regional stuff when I talk, so I thought, I'll, Italy, I'll do that for Italy and Greece. We'll have its own little theme here. But fun facts, you can only drink milky coffee like cappuccino in the morning. 
Not at all at any other time of the day. So when you order a cappuccino in the afternoon, they know you're a tourist. They know you they're not from there because you're like, uh-uh, that's, you don't do that. They will always have their espresso. They're just espresso in the afternoons. Um, the average Italian consumes 26 gallons of wine a year. Now, I think I might meet that standard this year. <laughs> being at home so much and enjoying some of my wines and tasting new wines. I think I might meet that Italian standard this year. And Italy, uh, pepperoni refers to bell peppers. <laughs> there is no Italian sausage, sausage that goes by that name. So that's just us here. We call it pepperoni. They don't call it pepperoni there. And on average, an Italian, it consumes 57 pounds of pasta per person. And I did have pasta last night and tonight, so I might might catch up to them, but I don't think so. <laughs> um, so yeah, and you can see on the map some of the regional cuis cuisines that you'll find throughout each of the regions as well. So some fun facts for tonight. Uh, how about Greece? Well, you can see my background. This is what I took the background from. <laughs> it's the, the secluded shores and the sun-washed cities and the food and the atmosphere and the music. Oh my goodness, I love the music in Greece and the dancing, right? Um, and Greece is unique, you know, you have your mainland um, cities that you go and visit with all the history and then you get, go onto the islands. It's a completely different uh, world. Uh, you can see, oh, this is a beautiful picture here, as you can see with a cruise ship in the background. So where the hidden cities meet seasides. So reasons why you want to dive into the Mediterranean, like places like Greece. Well, a lot of the hotels, especially on the islands, you have a room with a view, right? You, you, get, you know, they're small islands. You get a beautiful central located hotel and you have a room with a view. You're seeing the sea, of course. The places that launched, that launched a thousand myths. So there's so much history to go into Greece. Um, you can probably get your first year history degree in Greece if you stay there for a year. <laughs> and you can absorb all of the history because our tour directors and our local guides, they love history. They just love to share the history. Uh, they are certified. They are, most of them have a history degree. Uh, so you will learn a lot of da uh, dates, facts and everything, but sometimes they'll throw in some, you know, some stories and pop culture, of course, as everyone's interested in pop culture nowadays when we travel. Escape the ordinary, a yeah, tour gets you in the faraway islands or we get you into the untouched areas of a region that maybe not everybody goes to. Right, so you might not go to there on your own. You might not go there uh, where all the locals don't even know about some of these places sometimes, which is really, really nice. And live like a local, like I talked about, you know, eating the catch of the day, you know, just roaming the streets like a local. And nice about traveling in the off season is that you, you try, you truly feel like a local and locals really appreciate their, the business coming in in the off season. And they, and they get, they're very excited to see you and, and, and investing in their economies. <laughs> so when it comes to escapes by Globus and in the off season, it is thinner crowds and keeps the money in your pocket, right? So we have um, the average, the lowest six starts at, and this is uh, the Sicilian escape, starts at $148 a day, Canadian. This is Canadian. So you have escapes by Globus is half the crowds, half the price, all the inclusions. And I'll talk about the inclusions uh, tonight. We have six escapes uh, Italy tours so starting at 1099 Canadian, and that is the Sicilian escape is the lead in price point. And then we have six escapes Greece tours, and the Greek escape is the lead in price point uh, that's 1099, so just $60 more than Italy. <laughs> um, that's at your lead in price point. So these tours average about 40% less than, than traveling in the regular season. So if you maybe if you even take a look at touring uh, to Italy in uh, September versus going in October or even in November, you'll see a big price difference. Also with Greece, the peak season for Greece is June, July, August. I mentioned that's when the islands are mostly open to the, to the um, public. But it's nice to hear that Greece has extended its tourism season. As of yesterday, there was a big announcement by the president and their main tourism season is going to go into November. So a lot of places that do shut down in the off season will be remain open, which I love that. Love to hear that. And both these countries have opened up their borders um, for European travelers. And as uh, soon as our 
um, right, rules and regulations are lifted and as Canadians can travel again, I'm sure you'll all be eager to try to go to these places as well. Um, most of the tours, we do waive the single supplement for a select amount of people. So if you're a single traveler, Escapes by Globus might be perfect for you. You save, a, you save quite a bit by that uh, waiving the single supplement. Tours uh, travel from weekend to weekend. So a lot of times they are like a, a one week tour, just over one week and you usually go weekend to weekend, which is nice. Um, and all the departures are guaranteed. So Italy and Greece are very, very popular for Escapes by Globus. So if you really are interested, um, it would be a $250 deposit per person and your final payment wouldn't be due until 60 days prior and your agent can definitely help you with all of that as well. So, oh my goodness, I have a spelling mistake. I apologize. I, I would only want to pronounce what I just spelt there. <laughs> I've had a long day and I just quickly fixed this slide, so I'm so sorry. It's not Italian escape, it's Italian escape. <laughs> Um, but I will admit my mistakes. <laughs> um, this is a seven day tour Rome Venice. So if you've never been to Italy before, this is the perfect uh, tour for you. But if you have been to Italy before, um, this is a great one to go back to. You, you see, you're going to have two nights in Rome, two nights in Florence, and two nights in Venice. Um, and right on Venice Island, as you can see, that's where Globus stays. Um, and we have a stop, like for example, in Assisi and Pisa on the way as well. So, and these are long driving distances. I believe Rome to Florence is um, just over three hours and Florence to Venice with including the water taxi. I think you do it all within the four hours. It could be a little off, but uh, depending on traffic and everything as well. So day one, you arrive into Rome, Italy. This is where we have a welcome a meeting with our tour director in the evening at the hotel. There's a little welcome dinner and a little reception for everybody. And the next day is when you actually see the sites of Rome. And there's VIP access um, with the city tour of Rome. Uh, we go into the Colosseum as well as into the Vatican. So you get the pictures inside and the pictures outside, which is nice with the inside visit. So here's the Colosseum. A lot of people know, I should go back. A lot of people know this iconic picture, but a lot of people don't know this iconic picture. <laughs> um, so you see all the sites, uh, which is nice. They bring it to life. They tell you the stories. Uh, and you don't need to be close. You can actually social distance easy on um, a guided tour with us because we use the headsets and the receivers. So you don't need to be close to your, your local guide. The group can be standing far apart. Uh, you can be your, your, your two meters apart, six feet apart. No problem, you'll still hear everything. You can still take your pictures and still enjoy the sights. Um, the Roman Forum, of course, got in sightseeing, and I mentioned the Vatican is also included on this date. And I, so, I sometimes will show a picture of the Vatican lineup, the sad lineup, and uh, that on an average day, the Vatican lineup could be about three hours long. Now, I don't know in the new normal if that's going to be the case. I think they might be all re reserved reservations there now. Um, but to know that uh, you can't just show up at some of these sites and just go in. And it's nice about the touring, it's all planned for you. You can go right on in. My, one of my favorite places is Assisi. Um, I was so picturesque and, and I, and I, wrote a few university religious papers on this area. So when I first went there and I you know, went to St. Francis's Basilica, I, I was crying. It was just so emotional. It's, it's like a dream come true, really it is. Um, you, do, you do know the history of it. I've done, I wrote the papers and it was a dream come true for me to go there. And the, this picture doesn't give it justice. It's so picturesque in the area. So we stop at Assisi uh, and visit the Basilica and then we move on to uh, Florence. So in Florence, of course, uh, the guided tour includes all the main squares. So you can see here's the famous uh, Domo. I actually climbed up, oh, here, the next picture is it. If you're into getting good photos, and I, this is my tip for Italy, is to climb a tower if you can. Um, and I climbed them in like Siena, and in in, I climbed this one here, uh, the bell tower here in Florence. And I got some great area shots of the of the cities. So if you like to get really cool pictures, if you climb a tower, the higher you go, the better. <laughs> um, so you, the guided tour walking tour takes you to the main squares. Of course, you see the Michelangelo's uh, Golden Gates, of course, right? So and here's uh, the other famous squares. So um, and then when you 
from in Florence, did you have uh, a dinner included? Is it dinner or lunch? It's a lunch included, and it's like you get that real mama pasta lunch, you know, <laughs> included on this tour, which is really, really nice. Um, we go from Florence, Pisa to Venice. So we do have a stop in Pisa. You can knock the tower down or hold it up. I've seen all different people, what do you do here? It's a big site, but this is a stop. We're not staying in Pisa. This is just a stop on the way to Venice to split up the drive. Um, you, we give you time to walk around. If you want to go up the tower, make sure you book that in advance and make sure you contact Leah and she contacts me to see, we'll tell you the exact times we're gonna be there so you know what times to book because you can't just show up there again and walk up the tower and most time, but maybe in the off season, you can, I don't know if you did this. <laughs> I'm kind of nervous to walk up a tower that's leaning to be honest, but. <laughs> yeah, we didn't, we didn't walk up the tower there. No, we got lots of photos from the bottom, but mm -hmm. not that bit. And of course, Venice and the canals of Venice. And I've heard how the clear the water is now in Venice, you know, with the, the tourism tra traffic slowing down and the, and the cruises slowing down, the Venice has really become one of its own again, right? So here's the beautiful canal here, uh, the gondola. You wanna take a gondola, you want a romantic gondola, book one on your own. We do have an optional excursion to do a gondola ride, but you'll be with the fellow, your fellow travelers with Globus. So um, if you want that romantic one like you've seen in the movies, I suggest to talk to your tour director and they can help book a, one separately or they can maybe help book one as well. Um, but we have the private boat ride out to the Venice Island, of course. You see St. Mark's Square, uh, the Basilica, Adage's Palace, the Bridge of Sai. You see a glass blowing demonstration. So here are some images here. I don't know if this is bringing back fond memories for you. Uh, the glass blowing demonstration I thought was pretty cool. It's one of the first ones I've seen in my travel life. and. Uh, they're very, very artistic people and what they do with the glass there. So that's the Italian escape in a nutshell. <laughs> Let's move to Greece now. And we have the highlights of Greece escape plus three night iconic Aegean cruise. So I chose this one because you can't go to Greece and not go to some of the islands. You need to, and I, when I went to Greece, that's exactly what we did, is that we did a mainland tour of Greece and then we went to Mykonos and Santorini. So this one you can see has a little more than Mykonos and Santorini included, but you need to go to, to see the life on the islands in Greece as well. So of course, uh, when you, your first day you arrive into Athens, you have a welcome uh, drink with your tour director and then we do a, a tour to the Acropolis on this day as well. So here's a, another image of the Acropolis here. Um, the next day you will leave Athens um, and you have some uh, guided touring all the way up to you traveling to um, Olympia. So Mycenae, is that how you pronounce it? Mycenae? I don't remember. I'm looking at it in capital letters. Uh, it was where the 19th century um, excavations reveal the impressions of the splendors so vividly described by Homer. And you admire the beehive tombs known as a treasury, uh, a treasury. And you can see here's the beehive tombs. Um, and here's the lion gates. So we see all of this on our way to Olympia and of course the, the, the open amphitheater, theater, which is actually still used today. There's a lot of operas that go that uh, and rock concerts. So I, I think this was the one that the Rolling Stones played at or U2, one of the big rock bands played here in the late 90s, early 2000s. <laughs> and there's a, if you go on YouTube, you can find their concert. So they're still, because of the acoustics here, they still use it to today, so, which was interesting. I don't know if you have any fun facts on this. Not, no, not I. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did good. And I think it, yeah, I, I don't know if it's Mycenae or Mycenae. I always say Mycenae, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. I am not Greek. I'm I, no. <laughs> I, so just I apologize if I do pronounce anything wrong. Um, Olympia, which is one of our favorite stops. Um, if you are into the whole Olympics history and where the light or the torch is lit, this is really fun. 
Um, we, our guided tour, when we were here, we were the first group in, in there in the morning. So Escapes by Globus, I'm sure we had the site to ourselves. So I felt that here, with Escapes by Globus, you should have the site to yourself. We openly walked around everywhere, got to the guided, the guide took us to the main places, like where the torch is lit, to the track where you can run if you want, um, and really brought it to life. And then they gave you freedom to walk around to the whole site, which it was, I will tell you, my other half, that was his favorite part of our trip. This was his ultimate to be at Olympia and he wanted more time there. And I thought two hours was enough for me, but he wanted more time in there. But what we saw when we left blew my mind. So when we were leaving the site, I mentioned we were the only group in there. Like this is a big site too. The, all these coaches had just pulled up from a large ship cruise <laughs> when we were leaving. And I just can't imagine being at that site with thousands of people. Uh, I only could picture what we had. And I know you'll get that on the off season with the skates by Globus, the same experience I had here. Um, and then you can see Hermes as well uh, in, in the museum. <laughs> I'm not too, th I'm like, I get more excited about David <laughs> than, than Hermes. <laughs> Um, so we off to Delphi now and you see the sites in Delphi, of course, here's the iconic picture uh, here of the site in Delphi and we do have a local guided tour of the site and into the museum as well. On to our cruise. So we have a three, a three day iconic cruise. Um, Globus sees a celestial cruise line. Okay, so this and the and the port of Athens is not re really in the city of Athens. It's quite a distance out. So just to note that. So um, so we use Celestial Cruise Line, and this all your meals are included on the cruise. When it comes to the tour and at, at, during the tour, we include breakfast daily. Um, there is a lunch included in that, like a local favorite, for example, and there is some dinners included. So when you're looking at your specific tour that really fits your needs, you'll see meals included. But when it comes to the actual cruise, um, we have meals included. We use category XA, which is an outside stateroom. So that price from is an outside stateroom when you're looking at the price points. Um, all cabins are with, uh, with two lower beds and a private shower and toilet, full entertainment. Uh, there is drink packages available, alcoholic and non-alcoholic as well. So here's the port city here. And then of course onto Mykonos, which is actually, I loved Mix Mykonos. And it was, a, a, and I wanted to go to Mykonos because I heard I had the best beaches. <laughs> that's why I went and that's why I added it to my list. But it really surprised me how the beauty here and just walking in the streets uh, here, um, seeing all the stray cats. I took a lot of pictures of stray cats here. I had the famous Greek donuts uh, here and those windmills are just breathtaking. And I just sat there and took, sat a little table um, just down below this kind of picture here and just sat there and took pictures of, of the windmills here. Yeah. A very iconic, nice. We have a guided tour included here of Mickey House. I was going to say these beaches, this is the only place where my kids swam. <laughs> it was a really warm day that day. I think it was like 24 or something. Oh, and really? Actually, yep. Yeah, we sat on the beach and um, they got wet, so <laughs> they were happy to do that in November. We didn't expect to do that, but it was nice. Well, Mik Mykonos is known to have the, some of the best beaches in Greece. It's known mm -hmm. for it. It's got a, if you're looking at all the Greek islands, it's got those beach resorts right on the beaches as well, right? Even though it is a small island, it, it does offer that. Yeah. Uh, so that's why and I chose it, but I fell in love with it for other reasons besides that. I don't think I even went in the waters. So your children did more than I did. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the place to wander the streets and take pictures of doors. If you have always seen those cute pictures, white buildings, colorful doorways um, with the flowers beside it, it's, it's gorgeous. I, I just love that about Mykonos. Yeah, I do have a lot of pictures of doors when you mentioned yeah. that. Because <laughs> they had a lot of blue doors, there was some red accents, some oranges, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's the beaches, so we'll talk about the beaches. Here's the beaches. And a little more of the sand here is a little more smoother than other um, islands as well. Um, now we're going on to Turkey. So we do have a stop in, in Turkey and we do visit the, the famous 
Ephesus. I kind of say it right, Ephesus, <laughs> here on the local guided tour. Um, Ephesus was an ancient port city um, whose well-preserved ruins are in a modern day Turkey. So people go here just to see the ruins and, and learn about more. It's more of the history as well. Moving on, here's the grotto here in Patmos. So you get the iconic uh, overlooking of the, um, the sea here below picture. And then we're cruising from, from Crete to Santorini. So cruising from Crete to Santorini, this first port of the day is Heracleion. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't done this in a long time for Greece. Um, and then on to Crete, a few miles away is Gnosis, which here's a picture here. Gnosis in Crete. And then, of course, Santorini. And there's a lot of iconic pictures in Santorini. And Santorini is one of the more busier islands in, in Greece. It actually has an airport. So you can fly to Santorini, too. So, um, and that's how I did it. Is we took the high-speed ferries, and then we flew from um, Santorini back to Athens. So we didn't do the high-speed uh, ferry from Santorini to, to Athens. Um, here are some unique iconic pictures. Most of the time you see the whitewash and the blue domes, but this is a more colorful um, photo. I had the best grilled octopus of my life here, octopus of my life here. It was one of the, and the ouzo. <laughs> Drank a lot of ouzo and had the grilled octopus every day, pretty much. And when we came home and had the calamar, calamari here, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's, everything is so fresh here. And we had what I remember when we were on Santorini was um, the Spanakopita. It was <gasps> so good. And um, my parents had bananas foster. It was something I never thought would be on the menu in Greece, but they said it was amazing. Banana <laughs> so, yeah. So anyways, yeah. And looking, yeah. we had it at a, on a, at a restaurant overlooking the water. Um, above all the other homes on the sides, we were up above all like their- Like this, kind of like this look, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And all you saw was the sea. It was amazing. So you enter the restaurant on the main floor, but then they ha always have a rooftop terrace. So you head upstairs and you get the, the best pictures. Did you ride a donkey? No, Did you ride but a we donkey. got with a donkey, but <laughs> we didn't ride one, no. <laughs> Did uh, you? So I was forced to ride a donkey. <laughs> I'm going to say forced because I'm not a donkey person. Um, I have only ridden a donkey one other donkey one other time, and that was in Egypt. <laughs> it wasn't the best experience, but my other half—that's all he wanted to do—was ride the donkey. So we rode the donkey from the lower part all the way to the upper part. So, uh, if you like donkeys, ride them. If not, walk it. <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> it's an experience, like my other half always says. When, when you're in Greece, right? Well, let's just do this, right? So, and then you're you're we're back to Athens, and this is where the itinerary would end. It was back at Athens. So I mentioned this in my talk already. Is that we do use these little um, receivers, and we have the he uh, headsets. But if you're traveling with your own wireless headset, these are, are hands-free wireless. So you can connect your wireless headset to these as well. They also are your little hotspots. So we're gonna give you a little data as well. If, when, you're, when you're traveling with us, if you don't have a, a data plan, we're gonna give you a little data as well with these little hotspots as well. So this is what we use on our tours as our receivers. Um, also, when you're on your, our tours and you have free time, you want to know all your travel information, what to do in the destination, we have an app and it's only applicable to the tour that you're on. Uh, you download it 30 days prior. Um, it's really neat that you don't need to be on Wi-Fi to utilize our app. So there's interactive maps, there's recommendation for dining and sightseeing and doing stuff in your app free time. Freedom is so important when we travel. Uh, so we can do what we like. Uh, and the travel journal expense calculator. So you can do your Canadian to Euro uh, calculator there to see how much you're actually really spending on something. <laughs> um, uh, social media sharing. There's a, there's um, every other oh, forecast is on here. I'd say never trust the app forecast. So because nothing, mother nature is the best, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, so this is what we have for you on tour. And again, that's more of like a hands-free. So you don't have to worry about papers or anything either, which is nice. Now I want to talk, I talked a little bit about travel post COVID, but I want to make sure that you have a peace of mind when you are 
making your booking. And this is something we just uh, launched for our 2021 travel, is that once you place a deposit down um, and your, your final payment for Globus is due 60 days prior, and at that 60 days, you're like, hmm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna, ready to go to Greece. I'm not sure if I'm ready to go on an airplane yet. Um, don't worry, you can move that deposit to any, any, you can move it to a Canadian tour. You can move it to a European tour, a different European tour. You can move it to 2022, as long as you just advise before your final payment. So just something new that we put into place. And the last questions we always get is, what are you doing with the environment? <laughs> and what are we doing on tour with the, with the environment and helping the environment? Talking about less paper printing and more utilizing digital screens in the app, of course. But what our goal is to improve lives and protect places as we discover world together in a sustainable way in our family care. So we do work with a lot of organizations um, in the world. The Tourism Cares, of course, is part of the global Make-A-Wish we work with. Uh, UNICEF is a few that you recognize here. The One Ocean Cleanup uh, is one of our big um, partners. Is they clean, especially in Greece, we got that cruise included, right? So they're there to get the plastics out of the ocean, help clean up the oceans, but they also clean the rivers too. And part of the Globus family brands I mentioned is river cruising. So make most of this layover, everyone. I hope you enjoyed a, a little taste of Italy and Greece tonight and some of my expertise. And I apologize on my pronunciation. And, <laughs> no and I, but, um, but I really truly thank you for your time and to learn a little bit more what the Globus Family Brands has to offer, especially in the off season travel. Yeah, that was, that was great. I wonder, um, so far there's no sharing, yeah. questions in the oh chat gosh. box right now and I, I uh, was watching over on Facebook to see if there's any questions over there as well. Um, so far, make sure I'm not missing anything. Nope, so far so good. No one's made fun of me or anything? <laughs> oh, no, sometimes Guilaine, she's, she's uh, letting me down. Usually she uh, <laughs> types in there and says something, but no, uh, not tonight. So you're doing, you're doing good. Um, okay. I was just going to show uh, quickly... Um, one more thing and that was okay sorry one second i'm just going to share my photos over here can you see my photos or no let's say galen just said I, i'm tired sorry oh. <laughs> she's letting us okay. down don't apologize oh. we, 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 we're okay i understand what it's yeah. like this is my third presentation we'll today on three we'll different things her. yeah <laughs> oh wow Okay, so I was just going to show oh, you. Can you see this so cool panorama photo? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say one of the best things about Santorini is um, the sunset. Seeing the sunset on go over, you know, the island, um, just in the middle of the uh, of Santorini, um, you can watch the sunset go down. It's something everyone does in the evening. Find a, a nice perch along the cliffs, um, either at a restaurant or. Um, just, we, we actually just found a spot along the wall. So I sat and watched it. It was gorgeous. And I'll just show you a couple others. So this was on our way. It's just around the corner from the Acropolis. Really like no people. This is Mars Hill, um, just at the foot of the Acropolis. And mm -hmm. it was quite, um, this is Mykonos. Streets are empty. So you can get some nice shots of doors if you like. <laughs> and I showed you that. Um, this That's was... Awesome. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, obviously it's raining, so there's probably fewer crowds because of that. But in the summertime, they told us this would just be full of people. So we really had the streets um, to ourselves. It was really nice, empty there. <laughs> and that's Pisa. Um, the grass, you know, it was easy to get a nice photo, a, a group shot even, you know, of Pisa when we were at the tower. So I think that is... All of them. Oh, and we also saw um, Cinque Terre. So, oh, uh, this nice. Is Cinque Terre, and then this is this is inside the Colosseum, and you can see the number of people there, but it's not. It's all spread out. Easy, exactly. Yeah. Easy to walk um, in between the windows, you know, and get a nice photo in between each. So, yeah. Anyways, it's really I, neat to see your photos because you were there in the off season. So it's really neat to see this and really right. bring it to life, right? So yeah and how um, easy it is and, and pleasant um, for standing in line. It's not a line, you just, you're always moving, keep going, you know, and really you, before you know it, you're in there. So um, it was great. 
But I want to thank you, Leslie, for joining us tonight yes. and telling us all about Italy and Greece. And if anyone has any questions about Italy and Greece, I'll be happy to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, if you have questions about Globus or Escapes by Globus going in off season, I can always um, reach out to Leslie if I don't have the answer. So um, yeah, thank you so much. And everyone for joining us this evening. On Thursday evening, we will be uh, joined by Olga. She is joining us from the States with the American Queen Steamboat Company. So I look forward to seeing some of you then. Otherwise, have a great evening. Thank Take you. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. We'll talk to you later. Stay safe and healthy, everybody. Take care. <laughs> exactly. Stay safe and healthy. Okay. Bye. Bye.